Hey everyone, what's up? It's Nassim. In today's video, I am going to be talking with you about how I landed my six-figure tech sales job in Silicon Valley. But before we get into that topic, I want to thank Ana Luisa for sponsoring today's video. You guys know how much I love Ana Luisa. I have talked about them in the past. I have an amazing jewelry collection from them because I absolutely love their quality. Even before they wanted to partner with me, I purchased them in the past and I love the uh, longevity of their products. They are such amazing pieces. This is one of the earrings that, that they have gifted me to share with you guys because they are doing a sale right now. So I will leave a link to their website down below. It is the perfect time to shop for your loved ones, for friends, for yourself, family members. I just wanna share with you some of their pieces. So obviously I'm wearing everything from them right now. This is a thicker chain necklace. I believe this one is around 15 or 16 inches long. But again, I will leave their website down below. Um, this beautiful circle gold pendant. Again, I love these earrings. They're really kind of interesting and like they're these crisscross huggy earrings. I love huggy earrings. So I'm so excited to be wearing these particular gold huggy earrings from them. And they are just amazing in terms of their quality. Um, their prices start at like $39 all the way up to like super high end stuff. They tarnish resistant. I haven't had any sort of issues with their gold pieces like tarnishing or turning brassy on me. I have worn them in the shower. I have worn them in the pool a bunch and they're just all around really great pieces. So I will leave a link to them down below. Feel free to check them out. So without further ado, let's dive right in to how I landed my six figure tech sales job in Silicon Valley. And I wanna take you back to, whew, this is probably gonna age me, but let's say maybe 15-ish years ago. Um, I have a lot of topics that I have kind of covered in this region of sales or however way you wanna call it, software sales, tech sales. I have some videos that I have uh, talked about you know me leaving tech sales and all of that because I'm no longer in tech sales but I am in a different field of sales. I am a licensed real estate agent here in Orange County with Berkshire Hathaway Monarch Beach office. So I do have some experience in tech sales and I have videos about this topic which I will leave those linked down below. So if you guys are interested in this type of content feel free to like this video and subscribe. So let me take you back in time to my college years. I studied at UCLA, I got a bachelor's, I studied economics at UCLA, it wasn't my first choice in terms of my degree. I really wanted to study business marketing, but I was absolutely set on going to UCLA after applying to all the UCs. I got admitted to every single one of them, which so grateful for, but I worked my butt off um, getting like a near perfect GPA at community college to be able to get accepted to all of the UCs. But I, I remember visiting every single one of the campuses and UCLA for some reason just stood out to me, really wanted to go there. I had a family member go there. I remember going to their graduation ceremonies and just really looking up to everybody that went there. It just really kind of resonated with me. Uh, so I don't know, for some reason, I just really thought it'd be fun to study there. And I ended up hating, hating my major so much to the point where I was like this close to changing my degree. And I remember going to my parents and telling them, hey, like I'm really considering like switching my degree or just doing something else because this is tough. Like I am competing with some of the smartest like mathematicians that know their crap. And I'm over here struggling, struggling. And it was tough because I remember too, like there weren't a lot of study groups or people that were willing to necessarily like help you out or like want to study with you. So 
it was just tough. So I, re I remember having a, a hard time finding people who were willing to study with me and help. But I remember my parents saying like, if you're, if you're really wanting to change your degree, you're going to end up being there for a lot longer. So you're going to probably prolong this process for maybe another one or two years. It's really up to you, whatever you decide. And I just remember thinking, yeah, they're right. Like, I don't want to study for another two more years. I want to get out. I want to start working. Uh, so I stuck it out and it was tough, but I made it through. I, I <laughs> graduated with, um, you know, I was thinking I was probably going to fail, but no, I made it. I made it, you know, above the 3.0 GPA, which I was happy about because I remember that first job. I remember having to put my GPA on my resume. So fast forward to graduating. I completed an internship at Disney corporate in a completely unrelated field in human resources. Don't ask me why I landed on that type of internship, but it just sounded really cool to work for Disney corporate and to work in their media group department. I was actually working with a bunch of like QA engineers who were testing it out a lot of the like Disney video games. So a bunch of like nerdy type of guys and girls, but it was cool. Everyone was really chill, but I was working in human resources, like looking at org charts and updating org charts. And um, that just wasn't really that exciting. It wasn't really something that I was like excited about, you know, not. I didn't really want to pursue like human resources. So I quickly finished my internship there. It was like a six month paid internship in LA. And at the time I was networking quite a bit. I remember talking with my manager and telling her that I was really interested in getting into marketing. She was going to introduce me to, I think like a marketing manager or someone on, on the marketing side. And unfortunately, because I had a family member pass away. It was my grandma and I was really close to my grandma. It was like a devastating family circumstance, incident, situation. I just had to get home. So I flew back home to the Bay Area to be with my family and I basically never went back to LA. I was in the Bay Area, you know, for the rest of my career. I ended up joining my parents in real estate you know they were like hey while you're at home looking for a job why don't you work with us part-time or however many hours you want to set aside you can just start prospecting you know they made it sound really easy like you can just get on the phones this is the script you know just follow follow this script and they just like threw a bunch of scripts at me and i was like oh my gosh like what am i getting myself into but i was like whatever fine like what could, what could happen? Like, what's the worst that could happen? I, I listened to my parents on the phones for years. Like my, my parents came from a tech background and um, they were super knowledgeable and experienced with just dealing with different personalities and talking with people. And I would always hear them talking on the phone. So I was like, what's the worst that can happen? Like if they can do it, like, so can I. So I, um, I ended up yeah, prospecting for them and needless to say, it was actually really fun. I enjoyed it. I thought I was really good at it, which I was because I was setting appointments for them left and right. Um, they were going on these listing appointments, taking listings. These homes were selling. I was making a commission and in the end, I learned a lot. So um, while I was looking for a job, it just kind of naturally happened that I was looking for a entry level like sales position because that's what I was doing at the time. I was doing a lot of prospecting, cold calling, making appointments, setting appointments. And when I was looking at jobs, I was looking at job descriptions that match that. What ended up happening was for my first job as I uh, was reaching out to like managers and, and things like that, like and applying to jobs, I was really looking at LinkedIn mostly. Um, I reached out to this manager at this tech company. It was an analytic software company in the Bay Area. I remember, you know, asking him if he was hiring and that's how I essentially landed my first interview and my first job as a sales development representative. And it was pretty much doing, I was pretty much doing like everything that I was doing in real estate, but instead I was doing it for an analytics software company and I was setting appointments for account managers who would then try and close on those leads that I was handing off to them. It was a great job. It was a great 
first entry level position, I was making a good salary, uh, living comfortably, still at home, but saving a ton of money. I had a very good situation going for myself, uh, you know, salary, benefits, 401k, and I was really happy. I loved my team, I loved my manager, and at the time, um, I was doing YouTube on the side and I was making good money from YouTube. This was at sort of like that period of time in YouTube where there were a lot of brand deals, a lot of sponsorships. My YouTube channel was just taking off. I think I had like maybe 50 or 60,000 subscribers and I was just getting like sponsorships like easy, no problem. And I remember my videos were doing really well because I was really focused on like doing makeup tutorials and things like that. So I was a little bit of, you know, that sidetracked kind of entrepreneur type of personality where I was doing a lot of different things. And I remember really wanting to pursue YouTube because it sounded really fun to do YouTube and become a YouTuber. And unfortunately I left my comfortable, cushy SDR, salaried position to do YouTube. And I wouldn't say that that was a mistake. I, I learned a lot from that, but I remember it was hard to, you know, manage the nagging of my parents because they were like not hundred percent supportive of me doing YouTube full time. And also trying to make YouTube grow and scale and be something that I could live off of uh, financially, um, you know, in the long run, because it wasn't paying for everything. It wasn't uh, an income that I could live on uh, completely independently, and it would definitely not be paying for rent. So it was just getting me by to pay enough for, you know, certain expenses. So it was hard to kind of scale the business. And I was so young. I was probably only 22 or 23 at the time. I had no idea what I was doing. I did not know how to write up a business plan. All I knew was how to manage my sponsorships, how to send emails about contracts and film a YouTube video and edit and do all that on my own. So that was, that was a challenge of trying to, um, you know, make YouTube like a comfortable, living type of salary. So I ended up going back into uh, finding a job, entering the job market again and looking for a sales job. Turns out when I was looking on LinkedIn again, LinkedIn was such a great resource for me at the time. I remember looking at that same analytics company because they had posted and they had hired a new manager, a new female manager, which I was, which I was really excited about. She was just, um, like it just seemed like she was really friendly and easy to talk to. So I, I instantly reached out to her and I said, listen, like I used to work for this company. Um, I know the job. I've been doing sales for you know a little bit here. I've got some experience in prospecting. Um, I know the company. I I would really like to join the team again. Like, will you give me will you give me a chance? And she hired me like instantly. We clicked. Um, I loved her personality. We just I I had the sense that I would get along with her because she loved to bake. She loved she loved to make cookies. She even gifted me like a cookie recipe book. So there are just a lot of like similarities there. But I think. What I really enjoyed about her was the fact that she really valued my efforts and my work. And I was willing to put in extra work to training the team and to getting them where they needed to be because I had a little bit more like sales experience than the entry level SDR type of role. But I was willing to take that entry level SDR role. So she promoted me to a team lead position and I ended up helping her with hiring, with onboarding new candidates, with training, um, you know, just in different types of sales meetings, sales trainings. And so I really kind of appreciated that about her because I'd never really had a manager like value my efforts and my hard work in that way. So I really felt noticed and appreciated. I enjoyed working with everyone there and I stayed there for probably about a year, year and a half and then I get an email 
and this was probably one of the most exciting emails that I have ever received because it was from an Apple recruiter for Apple corporate they were hiring. They were hiring for an inside sales role within Apple corporate. So I would be an Apple corporate employee receiving all the benefits, the stock, uh, it was just like, wow, I was like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. But I'm also really nervous to take this email and to take it like further because I'm like, I just had gotten promoted to a team lead position. I loved my, my boss. I loved the team. But this whole new world, you know, kind of of Apple corporate just sounded so appealing to me. And this position would be a much higher position than the one that I was in. I would be essentially closing a new business. I would be prospecting, I would be handling the leads, I would be qualifying them, and then I would be closing them. There was no handoff. So this was a major jump up in my salary. Um, the base salary would be higher, obviously, with the commission. And so I was really eager and excited, but I was also wondering, you know, if this email was legit, because I was getting emails from a bunch of different recruiters, but I took the call and he was talking all about the perks and uh, it just, it all sounded very intriguing, needless to say. Um, well, the phone call went really well. I ended up going in person to meet with the hiring manager, with the VP of sales, with the sales director, with another person on the inside sales team. And it was just like a full round of interviews and they all really liked me. And I, that's how I landed my six figure tech sales job at Apple. And that was a crazy job. There was a lot of ups and downs, but I was making a very good salary. I was there for about four and a half years. It was It was great. I got it. I was hired and I stayed there for quite some time and it was really fun, enjoyable. I learned a lot. So that's how I, I got my tech sales job in Silicon Valley. So I hope this video was helpful for you. Again, don't forget to check out Anna Luisa, you guys don't miss out on their sale. Love their pieces. I will leave a link to their website down below. Check them out. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I will see you in my next one. Bye.